All right, we're going to do something a little different this week, um, just because I had a little time. Uh, I want to do the MMA content kind of in 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 stages. Uh, the first stage being uh, me giving my initial impressions based uh, solely on the numbers and what I know as of um, Tuesday, um, which is when the the salaries first come out. I do have odds. I do have some idea of where these guys are going to be priced. Well, I have the pricing. And this is before ownership comes in. This is before the industry kind of just weighs in. This is just my analysis of the of the numbers and my take on, on the card in general. And for me, it's going to be interesting to see how this kind of compares to what it looks like at the end. Um, the, the first thing that I've noticed, and the first thing I always look at is, are there these big favorites that are gonna be difficult to fade. Um, meaning that do they have the grappling upside, the huge favorites in the wind pool, you know? Um, the other thing I like to look at is, is, is there any, are there gonna be any, uh, any real price discrepancies? Um, and then I will look for a really, really strong inside the distance prop, inside the distance props. So the first thing I just wanna point out, I guess in no particular order, is that there's one inside the distance prop that's just extremely low, I mean, extremely high, um, that is going to be very difficult to fade. And, and that's going to be um, the Alonzo Menafield against Askar uh, Mosharov fight. Um, the inside the distance prop, and I'll, I'll pull this up actually, um, is actually minus 750 fight doesn't go to a decision, which basically means that this is going to finish. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's the analytical term. <laughs> um, so, and then we look at the prices here, you have Menafield's a very reasonable 8,700. Um, so this is gonna be a real key fight to target and the Menafield side is gonna be extremely strong at, at only 8,700. So that's the first thing I, I kind of would, would, would throw into your just expectations of, of what good plays are going to end up being. Um, the, the, the other, there's a couple of other fights I want to kind of target here. And, and one, again, a big favorite is Erin Blanchfield. Um, she's 9,600, which is something you don't usually see in, in women fighters. Um, but she's got all the grappling upside in this, in this contest. All right. So it's not just that she is what a minus 500 favorite. But you know, Blanchfield has been really, really strong with the takedowns. So uh, she is going to be, uh, she's going to probably take a lot of ownership. She's going to probably end up projecting really well. The only thing I would say about Blanchfield, actually, I have nothing bad to say. I mean, she's going to be a real kind of a smash play. Um, there's, there's another fight like this, and that's going to be up here. This uh, Evalev versus uh, Dan Eig fight. So it's very similar. You have a big four to one favorite and all of the grappling upside is with Evaliv. So these are really going to be the one, two, three fighters that I believe are going to dominate the ownership, going to dominate the, well, they're, they're, they're the best plays, you know, Menafield because of his inside the distance prop uh, and Blanchfield and Evaliv because of the combination of their win odds and their, and their grappling skill set. Um, so I believe is that this is where the, the main, you know, pivot points of the slate are going to be. Another fight, which I'm already identifying as one that you're going to have to probably play um, and probably get right, is, is Munoz against Gravely. Okay. You look at the pricing, it's, it's you know, it's very reasonable. It's, it's close to a pick em. Gravely's a slight favorite on the board and on, in the DraftKings salary, it's very similar. And the thing is, the win conditions of both of these fighters are very, very strong. So Gravely is has all kinds of wrestling and takedowns. Um, and in wins, he's going to score extremely well. And yet, on the other hand, Munoz actually is the type of fighter that, that doesn't mind getting taken down because he's going to continue to hunt for submissions, which means that he's got a lot of finishing upside, even given you know, his opponent getting the style of fight that he wants. So these types of, of, of matchups are extremely live. 
um, as far as DFS goes, because I it's find it difficult to believe that um, that uh, that this is not going to hit the optimal. So uh, one of these guys, whether it be Gravely or Munoz, should be, I mean, a major consideration, let's put it that way, at least, of every lineup. There is another um, uh, fight that's a really big favorite that I didn't talk about, um, and that's going to be uh, Damon Jackson against Daniel Argena. And the only reason that this one kind of bothers me is here's the deal. Damon Jackson is a huge favorite with very, not the greatest inside the distance prop. So what that means is that Damon Jackson is probably going to you know, go for takedowns and has all the grappling upside and all that stuff. But the thing is that Daniel Argetta is also kind of a, a grappler and wrestler himself. So the reason why I bring that up is, is one thing that I've noticed is that sometimes when you have two exactly fighters that are both grapplers, you might have both of them giving too much respect to one another. And it might end up being a kind of a more boring fight than you might anticipate um, with not, not exactly the same amount of takedowns that you would project. The only thing is Damon Jackson puts on such a high pace. I don't, I don't, don't know if Argetta can, can hang with him. Um, so he is also going to be a pretty big favorite and probably really popular. Uh, I'm, you know, we're just gonna have to see throughout the course of the week, how the, uh, you know, how the analysis plays, but, and that's the decision that you're going to have to make. It's going to, you're not going to be able to play all three of those between, um, where is he? Where's Damon Jackson? Where'd he go? Oh, is he not, did that fight get canceled? Oh, that's so funny. I guess the Damon Jackson fight got, got, well, that's good for us then. <laughs> So the Damon Jackson fight is not even on the board anymore. So that's uh, so uh, we don't have to worry about that. Wow, that's pretty funny. Um, okay, other fights uh, are forget about it. Whatever his name is against Mitchellitis. Uh, here, here's a fight that unfortunately I have actually an opinion on. Uh, I prefer not have an opinion on these fights based on my own views, but I saw Mitchellitis and he's terrible. I mean, he he he's going to try for grappling or whatever, but he has just very little, he's very little in terms of cardio. Um, if I were going to play, for example, a parlay where I would take what I considered kind of a really solid favorite, I would, this is where I would go. I would take Renat uh, Fucker named Dinoff, whatever his name is. Um, um, as a matter of fact, I mean, if you want to pivot off of one of these other fighters, whether it be Belanchfield or, um, or who was the other one? Menafield. Uh, this is probably a decent one to pivot off of because uh, Mitchell Edis really doesn't have a lot of cardio. So I think that far, that 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 the favorite. Let's put it that way. He can not only get a lot of takedowns and grappling, but he can he can finish him also. So I think that's very uh, that's very uh, that's a very strong pivot off of that off of the other expensive guys. Um, Molina against Juma Gulov. The problem with this one is I, I really like Molina. I think he's going to win, but he's such a pure striker. Um, it's, he's such a pure striker that, that he really needs to get that finish. And then you would think that, but you look at some of these other fights. Like he got the KO here and got 117 points. He beat Aori Lang in a decision and got 131 fantasy points. Because he would, he basically pounded on him for those last round and a half with so many significant strikes, got two knockdowns also. But if you're gonna look at the at the inside the distance prop, it's really just not great. I mean, it's favored to go to decision, so I don't know if Molina is the right idea here. Um, Stolce Saint Denis would have a pretty poor well, not poor, but on the weaker part of the inside the distance props. Um, Odie Osborne, this one, again, not so great. Selecki, maybe not so great. Trezano against Almeida. I was expecting this to have a better inside the distance prop, but it, it just doesn't seem to. And all the other women's fights, I think, are pretty poor. 
Um, I will say this, the Silva Botello fight, I, these women's fights that have a pick them inside the distance prop are pretty, are pretty interesting because it doesn't happen all that often. Um, and this is like the equivalent of basically a minus two to one for, for a, for a male fight. So I think that this fight actually has a, quite a bit of upside. And from what I've read, at least from the beginning, I think Silva's the one with the majority of the upside. So I think Silva can be somewhat sneaky here. This other fight, this other women's fight, I'm not going to have any interest in. Um, let's just make sure that these, all these fights are not canceled. I thought, I don't know what happened to that Jackson fight. Anyway, um, so Silva is 8,200. So she's going to be real. I think that could be a pretty good play as well. And what's interesting is the one fight I kind of left off so far is the main event, right? But you have to give it respect. I mean, because it has the five rounds. So the style of these fighters is not, okay. Rosenstruck has very little volume, but it has a very, very strong, you know, strong knockout uh, capabilities. And, and Volkov is, again, he's kind of a technician. He, he's probably going to go for a five-round decision. So I don't know if this fight is 100% necessary to get in the, to, to make the optimum. Um, I mean, the pricing is good, you know, 8,600. And, and what's uh, Rosen's truth? Um, 7,600. So look, if Rosen's truth wins, he's in the optimum. So that's good news because okay, Rosenstruck is not, I don't think he's winning a decision. Um, but the Volkov side is, 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 is not, not guaranteed. Okay. Let's put it that way. If he wins, it could be a pretty boring decision. So while, yes, I do like this main event. It's not, I don't think mandatory to get it in. Um, and I guess that kind of serves as my real initial look as, you know, as I go through all this, and as I'm speaking about it, the one take that I gave here, which I might want to walk back on quickly, is this Molina thing, okay? Because people are going to look at what I look at, and that's the inside the distance prop. But the fact is, guy does throw a ton of volume, you know? And if we worry, if we completely forget about that way of getting fantasy points, um, you're probably going to miss out and you will have missed out on Molina's both of his, both of his last two finishes. So maybe Molina after all might be a good pivot off of somebody like Blanchfield, you know, or even, or, or Evelev. So you play something like Molina and who was the other nine K that we talked about earlier? Oh, the guy fighting Mitchell Edis. If you play these two instead of, say, uh, Blanchfield and Evelev or, or Metafield or one of them, then you're, then you're getting different. And in a, what could be a nice full field this week, um, this might just be enough. Um, now, I haven't really identified a lot of underdogs that I like. Um, so we're going to have to get back to that. But I guess I would say that probably from these boring fights, like the Silva probably, probably is going to rate to be okay. Um, Rosenstruck is just going to have to be a good underdog, right? Stoltz, probably a good underdog at 7,700. Munoz, we already identified him. Um, and may maybe, just maybe this Zuma Gulov. I mean, I just, he just does nothing. I mean, he had a sub against R R Rivera, I guess. I don't know. That's a, that's a rough one. Um, and maybe this Mazarov comes out and just attacks and gets there against <laughs> No Mercy, against Menafield. I doubt it. Um, but as far as underdogs go, at least first look, it's going to be the Munoz from that great we fight. It's going to be Rosen's troop from the main. Probably one of these fishy ones like the Almeida, which we didn't talk too much about, or maybe the Silva. I think that's where the majority of your underdog play is going to come from. Is, is not necessarily needing the big upside, but just try to just gut out a win somehow. 
and that's pretty much all I got for you for now. I mean, I'm going to absorb a lot of stuff between now and the next time I give my, you know, probably my Friday um, look. But I think this is important, at least for me, to get this out there early. Um, and then we'll see kind of a, throughout the course of the week as ownership comes in how things might change.